Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back. We've got another Kickstarter unboxing. This one's a little bit different, um, or the same depending on how you look at it. It's another role-playing game. Uh, this one is from Blackfish uh, Publishing. Uh, it's a Swedish game called Vindishal. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, it is inspired by uh, Mesoamerican, Polynesian, and uh, Asian uh, cultures, they said. And I was really fascinated by this as it's, you know, their kind of look and interpretation of, of that mythology and kind of stuff as a role-playing game. I love the artwork. It's all very watercolor and pastel. It looks very Mayan. Um, they wanted, I don't remember how much they wanted uh, to do the project, but they blew it out of the water and they got about $17,000. Um, there were some problems with my shipping. It got lost, but the guys at Blackfish were amazing. Um, especially considering that this was not produced in English. This is all in Swedish. Um, and that's kind of how I had to communicate with them was through translation. Uh, but they were great and they got it to me and I'm so excited. Um, with all the translation software nowadays, I figured I would give it a try um, because I'm really fascinated by the stuff they had up on the Kickstarter and their website about it. And of course, got a t-shirt right here. Check that out. I love that. I love that kind of Aztec style weapon there. The hat and the whole aesthetic look of that. And I believe this is one of the archetypes or kind of classes you can play um, in the game. Oh, look at that. A little personalized note there. That's really cool. That's really cool. I like that a lot. A set of cards. As you can see, looking on the back, I'm going to have to put some effort into this, uh, translating the stuff. They said at some time they'd get uh, to doing it in, they'd translate it into English, but I was too excited by all the stuff I was reading. Um, so I went ahead and did this, figured I'd put in the effort. And here's another one of the archetypes. Look at that artwork. It's just amazing. I love that watercolor style. Another one. I believe the characters you're playing are wind souls, kind of uh, adventurers and outcasts. It's all kind of a, it's all based on die six, you know, creating a pool of dice using your stat and your, uh, and skills. And then uh, fives and sixes are successes and the number of successes you get determines how well you do. Uh, in the descriptions, it said it had a lot in common with uh, like Blades in the Dark and uh, uh, Year Zero. Uh, or year one, uh, and a couple others. Uh, so it's kind of a more of a communal storytelling. You almost don't need a game master or a leader, story leader, or whatever it is they call it, um, who just kind of guides everything, and you all roll and see how it comes out and kind of build the story around your successes and failures to say what happened. You know, one die roll determines... Uh, see, there's a map of the play world. You know, your one die roll determines the damage you do, the damage the enemy does, you know, whether or not you succeed or fail based on what you wanted to happen. And uh, there was a, this is kind of a post-apocalyptic, uh, look at that, so cool, very dynamic, dramatic uh, poses there, uh, kind of almost a post-apocalyptic type of world. There was a, a much more advanced society before this one uh, that fell 
uh, and some great powers showed up and like raised up uh, islands into the air and uh, and there was a a great power you know there were there was a society before uh, after that that was big that fell and now it's just scattered tribes uh, it's a little bit more of an upbeat as well you know it's not it's not too dark of a story they're telling uh, there's you know conflict and whatnot but it's much more of an upbeat type of uh, type of background um, where everything's reduced to kind of a tribal level and you know people tell uh, uh, what tribe they belong to by the tattoos they have on their bodies and all the animals and kind of monsters but there is monsters there are these uh rifts that slowly kill everything around them that are rent in the in the world and uh you know dark monsters made of shadow and dark with wide eyes and white teeth uh and there's one sorrows i believe is what they're called come through uh these things and just wreck ha these these fissures and wreck havoc and there are you know giant colossi uh wandering the wandering the world um and your characters can uh, find and access uh crystals that basically allow them to do you know break the rules of physics basically do kind of magic and have powers learn spells It's really sounded great. And it comes, I mean, it's got a, got an adventure that comes with it in the back to teach you the rules and to get your players on board. Uh, or I guess everybody on board, because there's, like I said, there really isn't, there's kind of a story lead, not really a GM in it. Uh, that does stuff. He said, really fascinating, really looking forward to this. Um, so that's the basic book and kind of uh, a set of cards. And this, I believe, is they sent me the expansion as well uh, right here, which they just finished on Kickstarter. And it looks great. It's, I mean, I'm really looking forward to this. Reading through it, translating a bit. Yeah, look at that. That looks so cool. I think this is the Kickstarter exclusive cover for it. And the level that I uh, backed it at, I got all the accessories for it. The the uh, character sheets, you know, little pamphlets of character sheets, or I don't know what you'd call these, where it's like, you know, glued at one edge and you can tear them off. And reference pages. And another one, band folder. Uh, I think these are just the, uh, what these are supposed to be on, the backings for these. It looks like through shipping the, uh, uh, the character little tearaways came off their backing cards. So that's cool. Get that and then look at these I don't remember what these were like I said it's uh maybe about two months late three months late uh because I lost track and I didn't realize that every they had shipped everything out to everybody and I hadn't gotten mine yet so I had to contact them and they were great about it they got it to me you know they verified my information and that I hadn't received it yet and sent it out and it came really quick so those guys at Blackfish were amazing to deal with 
and I'm really looking forward to it, but I mean, check out that artwork and the design. I, I was really fascinated by another uh, country's, another group, another people, because I'm here in America, the take on uh, that style of fantasy. And I haven't seen anything set in kind of that Mesoamerican, Polynesian uh, based game yet. So I was really fascinated by that because that's a section of the world that I uh, enjoy reading and, and looking into. But yeah, check all that out. And like I said, and it's also not, uh, even though it's almost kind of post-apocalyptic, there were society, you know, a very advanced society before that fell, and then another one uh, that's more advanced than the one you're in now that fell apart, and now it's just uh, various tribes uh, out in the world. It's still, as you can see, they, they, they're going for a very bright and by that extension, kind of optimistic uh, look. Their big thing is exploration and discovery in the stories more than, you know, fighting against the dark and tragedy that you get in a lot of other games. Look at those armors. That's so neat. So cool. Love the colors. Love the, just how vibrant everything is. And I'm really interested in that uh, example uh, the, the the adventure that it comes with to see how they translate that over into the actual gameplay and the adventures and the stories that you tell. Look at that. That is amazing. I almost wish they had like some posters to go with it because that art style is beautiful. All right, so there it is. There's my uh, Kickstarter for Vindishal. Uh Thank you very much, and I'll see you around the internet.